Boone, and welcome to the VistaCamp Tour for Fundraising Resources. I'm Sharon Rabb, a campaign consultation, and we are a training and technical assistance provider for the Corporation for National Community Service. We have been involved with uh, the campus and with VISTA for a number of years, developing the campus and the resources on it that we hope will be helpful to you throughout your service. Today, we will lead you through some of the fundraising resources that can be found on the campus. The will take between 30 minutes to an hour long, and we hope that you will see this Vista Campus space as a place that you can come to when you are in need of resources. We'll be taking questions, and you are free to ask questions along the way. And the first thing I want to start off with is that there is a poll on the right-hand side, and you can start to answer that if you would like. We'd like to find out where people are in their service and in their experience so that we can tailor our towards more to people's needs. There, Aaron Rabb, and also with me today is Suzanne Knizner. She's the Project and Corporate Coordinator for Campaign Consultation, and she is our technical provider. And Dan is going to give you some instructions about using WebEx. Hi everyone, my name is Suzanne and thank you for joining us for today's VISTA Campus Tour. We're very excited to have you with us and we look forward to hearing your questions along the way as well as at the end. Before we begin today's presentation, I do want to go over a few nitty gritty details. Um, if for some reason you were to lose either your internet or phone connection, please simply log back in or call back in as you did originally and you'll automatically be re-entered and can pick up where we left off. Um, this event is being recorded. Um, please know that we do have all the lines open so that people can ask questions along the way, but um, if you have anything going on in your uh, respective office areas that might be distracting to you or the presentation, we ask that you mute your individual lines by pressing star six, and then you can um, push pound six to unmute your lines once you're ready to ask questions. Um, and with that, I will hand it back to Sharon. So, Tinda, we are starting with the campus users' poll, and then we will talk about how you enter the campus, we'll have a, a brief overview of the campus, and then we go into the fundraising resources. i give you some tips, and then we're going to ask you to take an evaluation. Where you will enter the campus. Um, there are separate sections for VISTAs, supervisors, in state offices, the VISTA section is in the, the upper right-hand corner, and this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Uh, there are, you wanted a lot of valuable tools in this section, and we think that uh, you will find this part helpful. The risk for the VISTA campus is at the bottom in the bright blue. So this is log in. You should create an account. You don't have to. You may enter as a guest, but by having your own account with username and password, you'll have access to some of the resources and especially the forms that are really available only to those who have that are this members and who have an account. Sharon, do you have um, the poll results available? If you'd like me to go through them now. Oh yes, wonderful. Okay. Um, it looks like. Um, most of you, 71%, have visited the campus before today, so that's great. Um, but it does look like there's um, a wide variety between people who use the campus on a daily basis versus um, a times a year. So hopefully by taking this tour, there's some parts that might be uh, more useful for regular use. And it looks like um, all the uses um, are divided among the forms and the project tools and getting answers to basic questions. As, as well as specific resources. Thank you, Suzanne. So at this point, I am going to uh, open up the Vista Campus for us to take a look at. Okay, not yet. Um, if you can just talk for a minute, and I'll set things up. Okay. We are going into the campus life, so we want to be able to show you exactly how you can move around within the campus and how you can find the resources that you need. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do this in just a moment. We seem to be having a little bit of technical. 
technical difficulty. Um, since I've been on the campus, it might be helpful if you, uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. So now I'm able to show you the campus. Campus. This is what you will find: a uh, page with rolling uh, information. Campus divided into sections. Am I sharing it? I got it. Yes, I am. Okay. The campus divided into three sections: life as a vista, the work, and the connect as a vista. And these are, are repeated across the top of the page and also along the side. The rolling screen in the middle there uh, highlights some of the most important or most interesting features that you would probably find useful and helpful. And they also highlighted down below here under the links on the left-hand side. So you can take a campus tour. We'll talk about that uh, right now, in fact. You can do a, uh, look at the, we'll look at the VISTA map. We'll show you where you can find VISTA events. And we'll talk about the forums and what else you can do on the campus. The calendar, VISTA events up here list various things on the um, VISTA campus that are happening, such as today's VISTA campus tour. There's one every Thursday. Sometimes it's an open door, which you need to call in to schedule some time for some special concerns that you may have. But every week, we schedule a campus tour that's available for everybody, and you can access that by going through the VISTA events. Also on the campus, you mentioned to this search function up here, uh, in a term, and it will lead you to those resources on the campus, for instance, when, if I were to type in fundraising, which we'll do it at the moment since we're going to do that, you will get to the choice of fundraising materials that are available on the campus. So today, as I said, there are three sections. There's Life as a Vista, the work, and the connect with Vista. Life as a Vista is the general topics that deal with uh, things that you will have for doing your completing your Vista services. And as you'll see, the page is divided into blocks, and each one is uh, highlighted with uh, certain needs that you may have. These are also highlighted underneath the topic on the left. Take a look in the work section today. The work section deals with those aspects of VISTA that um, help you complete your ID and do your tasks. You can see pages again divided into blocks of certain interest. Uh, not surprisingly, most of the resources that we're going to look at are in the fundraising section. We will all have some other sections, and I'll show you where those are in a minute. So take a look in the fundraising section. Section is into three subtopics, and these two are highlighted below the fundraising topic on the left. Fundraising funds from individuals, writing grants and proposals, planning events. Seeing funds from individuals. Percent of the funds raised across the country for nonprofits come from individuals. So this is a very important sector. Um, people don't realize it and they think that they're going to get all their money from foundations and corporations. But without a good, solid individual base, you will have a very hard time sustaining your program. So there are a number of tools here on the funds from individuals page. Right individuals, bring champions, which are volunteers. Direct mail, bonus all ways that you raise funds from individuals. Notice that the blocks on the page vary in size. The top are larger, and the power of direct mail is a slightly smaller block because the the most important or will leave are the most helpful, most crucial uh, tools are highlighted at the top of the page, and lower ones, while not less important, and perhaps more meeting your specific needs, are supplemental. We have at the bottom of the page 
some more supplemental uh, sources, the power of individual giving and the sources of giving. As a link to a forum, uh, the work section, most of the links are to you and the work forum. This is a place for questions of other VISTAs and VISTA leaders about the work that you're going to do. And usually you can get some very good answers. We answer those pages, and if there are times when we can answer questions for you, we will do that also. Take a look at individuals writing to individuals. Of course, courses have the course content uh, listed on the left-hand side. There is always a free assessment here and unloadable. Opportunity to hear what you already know about the, the uh, area. The question will be answered again later as we work through the course. So to individuals, things that we're going to come across is the elements of an individual appeal. What's in the the uh, what's important to an individual appeal. Well, there's the package, which is what you write and what you put in with letters that you write and the envelopes and all the materials that go with it. When you write, who you write to, and how you will make the ask. The information is, in this case, is filled out below. You get lists of tips and information in this. Everything is highlighted. There's more information. I'm not going to go over each tool in depth, but I want you to know what's available in them. And of each page of this, you will have a um, question that relates to the pretest that you took. So, uh, there will be more than one question. Excellent. This is Gary. Can I help you? Uh, Gary, uh, We're on a web shop. Can I help you? This is the campus tour. No, I guess not. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and we always summarize at the end of the page. So, the this particular tool, writing to individuals, works through opening or the elements of the individual appeal, the time, when I uh, good information here. There are certain times when you do a, a mail appeal. A fairly winter appeal is traditionally done by just about every organization. That should not be the only time that you can contact people. So there are other times you want to make certain that people are informed about what you're doing and that these can also provide opportunities for appeals. So there's sometimes when you need to do an appeal uh, that something ordinary or extraordinary has happened and you really need to get funds for some special project or some disaster. So the idea of what right. Different kinds of uh, incoming to the individuals as they go. Here's the same schedule. I have a, another month executive director, or either by email or by post mail, uh, sent out to not just your donors, but to any of your uh, responders or interested constituents. Of course, you write thank you throughout the year. Whenever a gift comes in, you're writing thank you letters. Some missions have quarterly newsletters. An invitation is a way to cultivate a donor. Uh, just inviting somebody to something, whether or not they come or even intend to come, is a way of reminding them that you're there and that you are doing your work. And you probably have a list for your annual report. Reply advice. That is thing we looked at earlier uh, that gives its own opportunity to send in a gift by mail. So there's a question. 
show how this works. The idea of which of those questions, the answer is to this question, which following communication methods should remain active throughout the year? chart. We looked at thing letters. I'm just doing a Vista campus tour thing. Okay. The way through next is the audience. Who do you do? Um, it talks about how to develop a prospect list is very important. How do you start building up a list of people to write to and ask for money? Well, we can name wherever you go. Certainly past donors are people that <laughs> But on our Questions? Group? I'm hearing some background noise, so I wasn't sure if someone was trying to ask a question. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, capture names and addresses wherever you can. Uh, when you go out to speak to an organization, down a sign in sheet. Also, collect uh, email addresses. Because those are certainly an important part nowadays of any kind of fundraising campaign, any kind of fundraising program. Um, think about when you collect names, remember that all name, names are important. Find the correct names if there are spouses. Uh, make sure they're spelled correctly. Uh, when you approach people by mail, make sure that the uh, there is personal you don't want to write your friend or dear donor or dear prospective donor. It's very important to have names that you are addressing your information. And this section talks about segmenting your list. That segmenting list means you ask everybody, send everybody the same letter when you're asking for a gift. Or there are people who give larger gifts than others. You want to treat them very specially and perhaps have a separate special letter for them that may be signed by a board member or by a friend of theirs or certainly by the executive director. Uh, whereas there are other letters that are names that you've collected and you don't have a lot of information on them and they may not have ever given to you before, but you are trying to use this, this uh, mailing to cultivate them and bring them up to a donor status. They can be a little less personal uh, and have a different kind of appeal. What's right in the letter? You want to capture their attention. So there are some rules here, ways to capture and, and uh, keep the attention of the reader. Some of it is by personalizing the letter, using you phrases, making a, an appeal directly to the donor. There are uh, um, aspects of a that are of attention, such as uh, great enhancement by underlining, bolding. Uh, questions. Using PS. A PS is a very important aspect of a fundraising letter. People only read the PS. This is an example of a fundraising letter. It tells you how uh, the letter is effective and how you might want to improve it. Letters can be uh, usually two to four pages are considered an effective annual appeal letter. Two is fine. Please include an ask. Okay. Specifics for an amount of money. This is that you might want to personalize. Uh, for instance, if a donor has given $100 before, you might want to ask for an increase of 125 or 150 uh, if this is a first gift, you might want to start them off at a level of, depending on organization, $25 or $100. Signing in blue is an effective way to personalize your letter. Brilliant. And the PS, that is incident aspect. And more directions here on how to write a compelling letter. Take some letters that have come from other organizations that you may have received and review them carefully and see how you might want to take some of the aspects that you think are more effective to incorporate into your own letters. 
or what you might do that the organization hasn't done that you might want to incorporate into your own letter. Letters. Thanks are good as important as an asking letter because if you get a thank you letter, they're never going to give it to you again. Um, in some cases, they require, well, in all cases, they require it for their tax deduction, so you want to make certain that they have something in their hand without having to come to you and ask for it. Uh, a send letter, letter should be every bit as personalized as a uh, required letter. There are ideas that you can include in a thank you letter. Okay. You need to around quickly. 24 hours is 48 hours maximum. You have to have the check deposited and clear before you send the thank you letter. Set yourself so that the thank you letter goes out as soon as you have the information in the database that you can use to and give the, uh, the thank you letter with the amount and the address and, and other aspects of a, a letter. Or include additional information, other resources that you check out. Uh, books, some of them are other kinds of resources. And then you can take a post-assessment. If you answer the questions all the wrong, all along the way, you will then know all the answers. I want to go into is building fundraising volunteer champions. When it to individual donors, you don't need to do it all yourself. Woo! Is that here? Okay. This morning. I'm sorry about that, but we don't seem to have that uh, file. Perhaps later today it will come come through again later. Hundred volunteer champions are individuals who are close to your organization, have need a gift themselves, who can help you in your solicitation efforts. They do not have to be board members, although that's a good place to start. Anyone who has made gifts and uh, it is simple <laughs> and who can be available to you for help and serve as a fundraising volunteer champion, meaning that they can help you with your fundraising efforts. And what I do are things like personal letters themselves indicating that they have been donors and that they hope this person whom they know will also join them in making a gift and um, they uh, Putting together a committee of a group of people, they can be can be very helpful. Especially when you have major gifts, you're going to want to make use of fundraising volunteer champions. Because the people who have the uh, connections that you don't have, it's always much more effective to have someone who's a volunteer and made a gift than a staff person. I can ask. The other half in this section are uh, or rather specifically directed one. This power mail has a fun interactive tool that you can use that talks about their aspects of a direct mail campaign. So each each tool is there we are <laughs> highlighted with an icon at the bottom, and you get some information about that particular aspect of the fundraising package. So you have the care envelope, the letter, the sample of 
you should do and how you write the letter. The letter, not every uh, organization includes a list letter, but that's sometimes something that may come from, for instance, one of your volunteers or maybe something that highlights your organization in some ways outside of the you know, your letter writing process, perhaps a news story or congratulations from somebody in the community that has some uh, authority. There are different guidelines for the, um, the reply envelope. That's the envelope that you use to, that a dog would use to send it in his gift. There are some things that you might want to consider about it, such as whether or not to use a stamp or require the donor to place a stamp. Um, some organizations use, instead of an envelope, a reply device, a tear card, for instance. It allows you to gather all the information and accompanies a gift that they then place in an envelope themselves. Or a thank you letter is an important part of the package. Donations include a brochure that highlights the program that they're raising the funds for. Donations include a premium. A number of those include mailing labels, postcards, some kind of gift that uh, would encourage a person to make a gift to your organization because they've received something for free first. And then just make certain that you have all the, the contact information. is um, one that would help you do a phone-a-thon. For an organization that does a phone-a-thon, this tool will go through the steps of a phone-a-thon and would need uh, to identify the prospects for the calls, uh, how to set the goals, how to get leaders and volunteer callers, um, what kind of hardware you need to have, telephone settings and all, uh, what kinds of print materials you want, dialogue that you're going to help people uh, practice so that they can make their call, how to prepare those materials and uh, prepare your callers. Of working the 11 steps will help you to produce a volunteer-led phone call. On the bottom, we have two tools on individual giving. This tool shows you uh, just how much individual giving impacts our, our donor pie, giving pie. Individuals combined with bequests, those are gifts from people who have left you in their wills, uh, add to more than 80% of the giving. Donations, uh, oddly enough, people think to first quite often we think about asking for funds, but you can see here they give the smallest amount even after foundation. This, this is a couple years old. Um, foundations, because of the economy, have been stressed, uh, but have not necessarily uh, lost any of their giving power. Interestingly, a corporation that said give more than dead people, or some people give more than corporations. All tool is a graphic depiction of all forms of giving. and the benefits and uh, difficulties and challenges of each. So you have a dis description of giving versus individual giving, and you can compare the two of them to see which perhaps you might want to go to for your program. Uh, for instance, corporate gifts do give a lot of non-cash and in-kind gifts. And they can take money, and they provide a pool of volunteers, a number of uh, the benefits to going to corporations for your gifts, even if uh, they don't give as much of the total pool, they might be the right one for you. Okay. So next, we'll go to corporate fashion gifts. And you can see uh, the subtitles are listed on the side here, too. So, writing grants and proposals to corporations and foundations, there are a couple of resources that are most important. The first one, the Build 
build a case for support, and they do a tool that uh, works strictly with writing proposals. We do two. One is a flat tool, and the other is a course. Thinking of building your case for support. This is an interesting tool. And we can skip the part here. There are different sections that you go through when you're building your case for support. When you, after you've gone through them all, you can build a case for support as you're going along by downloading a template. Each of these questions will take the following the steps necessary to create your own case for support. And when you get through, you can take all these headings, these questions, and put your own headings in, perhaps, and you will have a completed case for support. The using proposals that work. Um, operates in a very small manner. And that it takes you through the steps necessary to produce a complete proposal. I think it's skipping the introduction. There we go. Interactive. There are sheets that you can print out at the beginning of each section. Our proposals are and are not. Here's the table of contents. So it talks to you, talks to you about. Uh, how to clarify what you want to include in your proposal, how to prepare your budget, an extremely important part of a proposal. Organizations or foundations and corporations go to the budget first when they're looking at proposals. Tells you what to do beforehand to collect all the information you need for a proposal. Uh, research different prospects, foundations and corporations. Uh, gives you an opportunity to draft your proposal outline. Ahead to the proposal outline. Okay. Talks about actually writing your proposal. Talks about the executive summary and cover letter. How to make a proposal stand out from the crowd. True. You is um, and all of the work for it. You should be able to have a proposal that you can use uh, for a foundation or corporation. Questions on either of these two sections of the, the uh, proposal writing. I'll give it individuals. Proposal course is very similar, only it's not as interactive, it's more of a course actually like you had before with the pre assessment, uh, all the information that you need in a post. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening here. Working this morning. Also, uh, we have a few more three smaller resources again, the sources of giving, which is the same one that you. Saw in the individuals and look challenges. Any questions now? Okay, I'll do the uh, and the in this fundraising 
block in the work, which is plan events. So this has a, uh, do a lot of work in planning special events. So this is a of fundraising for many of you. We have the Building Fundraising Volunteer Champions course because uh, fundraising for, through events is a very volunteer intense activity. Uh, you will need to gather a lot of volunteers for this. We have two or several uh, tools that work with uh, planning fundraising events. One is one more of our, our interactive ones, and in that it's a course again, and through all the steps. Thank you. So the four keys for planning a special events, which are uh, getting the community problem, the response and the event goal, finding your event audience. By the way, there are two. There are the, those that are your audiences who will be coming to the event, and also volunteers are another audience, and then seeing the right, right event. Give any calls? and fill in the uh, information, such as you're here, you're asked to write a problem that your organization is going to solve for the, through holding this event. And you um, collect your information and, and again, come through with a final um, piece of work that is planned for your special event. There are resources from the PSO that you may have forgotten about. You've got so many at your PSO that uh, sometimes it's hard to remember where they were, so they're kept for you on the campus. And when we go back to the campus, I'll show you where the PSO resources are. Look familiar? It's because you've had them before. And use the forum. That's a very popular place to ask questions about events. I think we had one uh, last month that asked just that question. We have the, the smaller resources, but especially using volunteers. Another section I want to show you that um, provides well, there's two actually, or maybe even three. Communications and marketing is a uh, often an aspect of fundraising, so you might want to take a look at the materials that are in the communications and marketing section, especially if you're going to be working with media around fundraising efforts and if you're going to be doing some, some marketing. The case for support. Case for support is used for a number of different uh, purposes, including uh, fundraising, including marketing, and uh, it's a general document that you're going to want to have somewhere in your organization. And the question that I want to show you is in raising resources is the community development section. You'll remember during your PSO, you talked about the five C's model. The uh, five C's model is a um, framework for uh, living community. And you can include a separate five C's section with each of the five C's outlined and a number of key tools in each of them. So in the community, Sorry about the fire engines, connections, control, cash, and collective action. And with the cash section, you'll see a number of the tools that we talked about that came from the fundraising section, producing proposals that work, building your case for support, power of individual giving, sources of giving. Many are included in the 
fundraising section, but they're also gathered here under cash. Uh, bottom of the of each page, there is a listing of what is in each of the sections. So you also take a look at the uh, community section for the the keys. Or there's the four keys. There were two tools there. Connections. Action. Okay, well, that's about it for uh, it now for a particular page. Um, I'm going to open up the lines or ask if you have any questions. Huh? Any questions? We went rather quickly through the tools that were there. I didn't deeply into a lot of the thought behind various fundraising philosophies and why you would want to uh, a fundraising campaign in a certain manner. But we're certainly available if you have any questions in that area. Well, there are some tips here. For the Vista Campus, you want to save your login information. Remember the search box if you're looking at something. Look around the campus. Uh, once a month, we have a, an overview tour of the campus. You want to go back and see what else is available in a general terms of how to make a, a more effective use of your um, work in the campus. Familiarize yourself with the campus catalog. I'm afraid I didn't, I didn't uh, highlight that, but on the left-hand side of the home page, there is a catalog which gives everything that's in the campus listed. Some pages. And use the forum. Start a conversation on the forums. They are very helpful. Peer advice is usually the best advice because the ones who have had some experience are very willing to discuss others who are new to the situation. And it's always good to share ideas about what has worked and what hasn't worked as you go through your service. Any more? Well, there is an evaluation. I, if you would take uh, a minute or two, a few minutes to um, respond to the questions, we do appreciate your feedback and try to improve our sessions on the information that we get from you. And this evaluation is very helpful to us. Thank you very much for your participation. As I mentioned, our next webinar will be on Thursday, September 20th second at 2 p.m. and we will do an overview of the campus which will look at all of the sections of the campus to uh, perhaps a better idea on how to use the total campus. If you have more questions you can contact us at the Vista Campus at campaignconsultation.com. Complete schedule of the Vista web shops you can go on into the uh, this address here below or you can look on the campus event schedule and find what we have. We have a number of topic specific webinars. There's an overview in this one on fundraising. We do a project management. Uh, we do a nuts and bolts one. And we do one on life after VISTA for those who are going to be moving out of, out of VISTA and into a different life and need to get some ideas on where they're going to go next. So thank you so much for your participation. I uh, hope that you will attend one of the other VISTA webinars. And I hope that on this one helpful. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to send a contact us at VISTA Campus, campaignconsultation.com. Campaign thank you, everyone, and look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.